Welcome to a new video. Today I want to talk about large language models that have vision capabilities and I want to find out if there are any good with regards to potential business use cases. My name is Martin and I'm the founder of Innovation Flows and the host of this channel. Let's get started by looking at the different models that I will be testing today, shall we? In this slide you can see the details of the six models that I've chosen. Some of the models are a little bit older, so from Q1 or Q2 2024 and some a little bit newer, so with a release date in Q3 of 2024. They vary in size from 3.8 billion parameters to very, very large but undisclosed. And there are quite some smaller models that can potentially be run locally in the 7 billion parameter range. Some of these models I'm running locally on my computer via Olama. The newer smaller models, however, are not yet available in a file format that allows them to run locally, so they haven't been quantized yet, at least not so that they are working. So those I'm running via Hugging Face API. And then the two closed source models from OpenAI and Anthropic, I use a paid API. Let's next take a look at the different use cases that I see and that I want to test today. We will start with some baselining, where I simply ask the models to describe certain images and we can then compare the quality and the depth of their response. After that, we'll have a look into object detection to check how well they can see, count, and describe the position of certain objects in an image. Next up is text recognition. Can they read? And we will test that with typed and also handwritten text samples. Then we will proceed to ramp up the complexity a little bit by checking if they can recognize, describe, and interpret graphs or other data that is presented visually. And the last and probably most challenging use case is a combination of recognizing images that contain charts as well as text that explain a certain topics to see if the models can reason and interrelate the data. Before jumping into Nime Analytics platform, the tool that I've chosen to conduct this test, let's take a look at the different test cases that I've chosen for the different use cases. For the image description, I've chosen an image of a cat and a dog, and the task is very easy. Describe what you see in this image in detail. After that, for object de detection, there are two images, one showing for people on a lawn and one showing a range of traffic lights, and the tasks are how many people are in this picture and how many traffic lights are in this image. Describe their position in detail. As you can see, step by step, I try to increase the complexity. The next two images are for the use case of text recognition. One image is computer written and the task is to extract the text from this image verbatim, so without any prose before or after. And then there's a handwritten note, and the task is what is written on this note. Then onwards to the chart description, there's a bar chart showing expenditure and in income of different companies. And the task is to describe the chart in general. What company makes are its profit in absolute terms? Think step by step. And once we're done with that, we are on to the last and most challenging task, which is about an image that is taken from a research paper on large language model training. And the task is to describe what this paper is about based on the text and the images. Describe in as much detail as you can and think step by step. And these are the test cases that each of the models will be put through. So without further ado, let me quickly switch to Nime Analytics platform, give you a high level overview of the workflow, and then we'll focus on the details. Okay, here we are in Nime, and I'll start with a high level explanation of the workflow. So up here, we create some variables. On the one hand, I needed to set up my own Conda environment because I wanted to use packages that are not available in the bundled environment like OpenAI. And I also had to set certain API keys for the paid APIs of, of Anthropic and OpenAI. Then there are two tables that are important. 
the table reader here. Let me pull up the preview contains the images and very importantly, the local path to the image as well as the prompt and the order that I want to see. And these are then sent to a Python script that takes the path to the image and converts them to what is called a base 64 encoded format. And that's the format that the language models need the images in to be able to yeah, read them. At the bottom is another table which contains the model details and certain parameters that are important when I want to send data to the relevant endpoints, the APIs where I can run the inference on the images and the prompts. So what's then happening is that uh, the tasks are sent into a chunk loop. So the way that this works is I take the first task and then in an inner loop, I send the task to every model and collect the response down here in the table writer. And I've wrapped the Python script that runs the inference and accesses the endpoints into a try catch block simply for the reason that API calls can fail. And to be honest, especially the hugging face API, which is rate limited, uh, failed quite a number of times. So that's why I had to repeat this process for the missing results a couple of times to get them all. And then it's all saved in this table writer node. So I don't really want to go into any more detail than this with regards to how I did it. I'm currently working on a node that hopefully allows a much more simpler setup in the future with regards to prompting vision models. And I'll share some news about that in the near future. Let's now move on to the evaluation bit, which I'm actually much more excited about. And for that, I've written a second piece of workflow where uh, we are loading all the responses, joining in the images, doing some additional pre-processing so that we can then in this component render. We won't start with the LLM report, but we will start with the cat. So let me also pull up the image in high res so that everyone can take a look before I walk you through my take on the results. So here's the first image, the cat image, blue background, tabby cat that sort of stays, stares next to the camera, has long black and gray whiskers, beautiful cat. And let's see what our LLMs made of that. One thing before I proceed is when going through the results of the tests, I won't read out every answer in detail. However, I'll be sharing my thoughts on each of the models and I will move through the components that for a certain amount of time, all the text is visible for all the models. So feel free to pause the video and read through everything yourself in its entirety. Let's get started. Here are the responses to the cat image. Looking at the first model, the lava model, I noticed that the description is quite good. However, the model seems to be hallucinating on the fact that it thinks that the cat is sitting on a blue cushion, which I don't think is the case if I look at the image myself. The next model, the lava 53 fine tune, does in my view a really good job in describing this image, I, and I couldn't pick up anything that would have been inaccurate. This is positively surprising, especially given the small size of just 3.8 billion parameters of this model. The first of the more recent models is a Quen2 vision model, and I noticed that it seems to be entirely correct. However, it is very short and concise in its description compared to the two responses that, that we've seen previously. By 3.5, also describes the image accurately, and I was especially surprised by the model picking up on the M-shaped marking on the forehead. And also in general, the level of detail that this model was able to describe was quite astounding. GPT-40 Mini does a decent job as well. I didn't pick up any major differences in quality to any of the last three models, so that also was positively surprising to see that the open source model seemed to be pretty much on par for a simple task like this. And last, we have the Claude model. It also captures all the details very accurately. And what stands out here is that it really describes everything in a lot of detail. 
And also the language seems to be a little bit more advanced than what the other models were being capable of. That's not entirely surprising given that this model probably has a larger weight size compared to any of the other models. So in conclusion, it's fair to say that all the models apart from the first lava model did a good enough job in describing this image. Let's move on to the dog image. Here we go. A nice goldy standing on a gray stone or something like that with a house in the background. I will keep this one fairly brief given that the results were not that different from the cat image. The lava model hallucinates again. It's especially talking about the color of the roof, which is supposed to be gray, although the roof is not really visible. And it's also hallucinating about a stone statue of a person being somewhere in the image, which isn't accurate. The best quality response is again from the Claude model, which is not a surprise again. And all the other four models are reasonably well on par in the quality and level of detail with what they responded. With the four smaller models, there's one that's standing out, which is a Lava's Refine Tune. This was the only model, apart from Claude, that picked up that the background and the house and the trees are blurry. So that was quite impressive. That said, let's move on to the next use case, which is object detection, and we will start with the crowd image. So here's the image. As you can see, four people at some sort of a protest or demonstration standing on a lawn in front of what seems to be palm trees, likely in the background. And let's see what LLMs made of that. So the nice thing is that the responses are very crisp and short. And it's immediately obvious that the two older models both get it wrong. The first one counts three people, the second one five. What then stands out is that the next three models, so Gwen 53.5 and GPT-4 Mini, deliver exactly the same response. There are four people in the picture, which is correct. And then Claude 3.5 Sonnet does the best job because in addition to answering the question, it does provide a lot of reasoning, like it picks up that it seems to be a demonstration. They hold signs with various messages. It picks up an American flag and it starts also discussing what the people are wearing, why they are ca covering their faces and so on and so forth. So quite, quite impressive quality of interpretation of the image. Let's now see how the models behave if they are also asked to describe the positions of objects. So here's that image. As you can see in the foreground at the top, there are three traffic lights, one with an orange arrow, green light, green light. And I've intentionally chosen this image because in the back there are two more red lights, which are very small. So I'm really curious to see if any of the models manages to pick that up. So let's go back into NIME and Pull up the traffic lights and let's take a look at the results. So the lava model identifies three traffic lights somewhat correctly. However, the description of their position is very vague at best, if not wrong. The Phi 3 fine tune identifies three traffic lights in the image, also identifies their position above the road. However, does not provide too much more detail and also is getting a bit confused as it seems to expect that all the traffic lights show all the colors all the time. The Gwen 2 model is again accurate for the street traffic lights and describes their positions. Overall, I observe again that the tone of this model is very sober and very straight to the point. By 3.5 identifies street traffic lights and describes their positions on a very vague level. And it is the first model that tries to comment on the colors that the lights are showing. However, it's only getting one out of three right because it's saying that the left one is red, the middle one is green, and the right one is yellow, whereas it's yellow, green, and green from left to right. The first closed source model, GPT for Mini, is identifying the signals in a bit of a weird way. It talks about six traffic lights, and when reading through that, it becomes obvious that it's trying to identify the different signals in each traffic light. Reading through the full response, it looks like it is correctly identifying three different positions, 
and it's also describing the colors correctly. It's also picking up on the left traffic light showing a yellow arrow. The cloud model once again is doing a brilliant job. It's identifying three traffic lights, is explaining their positions and the color of the signals that they are showing correctly. In addition to that, it picks up on all the street names, the turning vehicle sign. It's giving a lot of interpretation of what the signs and signals meet. However, it's also not picking up on these two very small traffic lights that are located in the far background of the image. Overall, it's Fair to say, I think, that there's quite a difference in quality becoming apparent if the model is asked to do a little bit more than just to detect objects. That said, let's go to the first text recognition case. So here's the first image. There's text in the middle. It's about a compiler. But then there's also text up here in the top left corner and in the bottom right corner. And the reason why I'm Raising this point is because the model is being asked to provide the text verbatim. So I'd also expect this to be picked up, this to be picked up. Let's see how our models are doing. Let's keep this reasonably short. Lava gets it wrong. Lava phi 3 fine tune gets it almost right. It's missing the heading and the study.com. So the first compiler and then the study.com at the end. Quen vision gets it a little bit closer to right than the 3.5 fine tune. It's just missing the study.com at the end. It gets this compiler compiler correct. Phi 3.5 vision indirectly provides the information so it doesn't verbatim provide the output. So that's why I actually would say this is a fail. And Claude is picking up all the text and is the only model that also picks up the study.com but it's also not entirely sticking to the task because of this prose here at the beginning. Here's a text and extracted verbatim from the image. Good. So next up is a test with a handwritten note. So here's a note. It says, why fall in love when you can fall asleep? Beautiful, isn't it? This note also has text at the top and some small text that is hardly readable at the bottom. Switch back to Nime and let's load up the results. So the Lava model almost gets it right. It picks up an additional fall asleep at the end. And also it's not just responding to what's written on the note, but it's also interpreting it a little bit. The Lava 5.3 fine tune does not entirely pick up the quote correctly. And it's also hallucinating a bit and trying to read the very small text at the bottom of that note. Quen2 and Microsoft by 3.5 get it right and respond with exactly the same sentence. And also GPT-4 gets it right. And the response is not too different from the open source models. Claude provides a bit of narration, but when reading through that, I was very positively surprised because it also picks up that there's some smaller printed text at the bottom and it's not trying to hallucinate what it's about. It just says that it's too small to read. So that was some good observation, I would call that. Now things will start to get interesting. Let's see what the models do with that chart. So here's the chart image. There are expenses and income for five companies ranging from zero to 55 something, probably million. and the task of the model will be to also answer the question on what is the most profitable company in absolute terms. So there we're talking about the difference between income and expenditure in absolute terms. Just to spoil it, the right answer would be that companies N and Q both have a profitability of positive 10 and therefore they should both be the most profitable companies. Let's see if any of the models can deliver that answer. Let's pull up the chart. I'm afraid though that the first two models disappoint with this type of task. The Lava model doesn't even pick up correctly on the coloring of the income. So it's uh, mixing it up. Um, it's saying that green is expenses and blue is income. So that's incorrect. And after that, 
it just gives us a sequence of tasks in order to get to the profitability. If I three fine tune, then goes a step further because it's hallucinating a third color, which is yellow, which supposedly shows the profit in the chart. So obviously this doesn't exist. And then it starts calculating the profit. So it picks up the numbers incorrectly and then also the profit doesn't make sense. 30 income and 40 expenditure is minus 10 and not plus 50. So that's a bit disappointing. So then let's look at the Quintu model. Um, this is a really confusing case. The answer clearly seems to be cut off, which is why I tried different spaces via the web UI on Hugging Face providing the same image and the same task to the model and I consistently got this response. And let me tell you, on all the other tasks and images that I've given it, it's done a brilliant job. But this one, even with giving it a second and even a third chance via the web UI, I couldn't get a proper response out of it for whatever reason. Let's move on. The Phi 3.5 model is doing a much better job. It recognizes that there are five companies. It does a good job in describing the chart in general. However, when it comes to doing the math, it only gets the last two bars of the last two companies correct in identifying the right amount of expenditure and income and also then calculating the profit. In the other three cases, the math based on the numbers that it finds incorrectly add up in terms of calculating the profit based on income and expenditure. However, the numbers are not picked up correctly, so it doesn't also give us the right response. I'm disappointed with GPT-40 Mini um, because uh, whereas it does a good job in explaining what the graph shows, it doesn't even try to calculate the profit for us and it doesn't even try to pick up the amounts of expenditure and income. So it just gives us a very painstakingly detailed plan for every company where it gives us a formula that we need to apply. So not really too pleased and a little bit disappointed to be honest with that. So then to no one's surprise, the Sonnet model again is the best model for this task. task. It also does a good job in describing everything and it's also doing a good job in picking up the numbers and doing the math. Believe it or not, but it only made one mistake for company Q where it didn't pick up the expenses value correctly. So therefore also the final response is incorrect. So for company Q, the expenses are 30. Let me just pull that up. Company Q, it's 30 and 40. Whereas it picked up 40 and 35, calculating a profit of five. And therefore the final conclusion is also not correct. It should be company N and Q. But out of um, 10 bars, it picked up nine correctly. So that's the best level of quality in here. From a practical perspective, if there's a 10% error rate in finance, then you still need to check everything. So this also says that either there needs to be more prompt engineering or maybe um, charts that are shown as images to models need to be um, annotated slightly differently to get a better response. But just with my very simplistic prompt, this wouldn't be ready to augment someone in a production setting, in my view. Good. With that said, let's move on to the most difficult task. So here's that scientific paper. Uh, in a nutshell, it's about trying to find out what is the most compute optimized approach to fine tune a large language model when you're on a fixed budget. And the conclusion is that when you're on a fixed budget, you might be better off to using a cheaper but smaller large language model to generate data for fine tuning a different model than to use a stronger but more expensive model to generate the data. And that's written down in the summary, which is printed, and which is also the conclusion when you look at the graphs, which 
compare the two different scenarios. So let's jump into NIME and let's go to our LLM report. So this is quite some large text, to be honest. I will leave the responses for the two lava based models on screen for a moment. However, I won't comment on them because honestly speaking, it's been an entirely fail at best because they're just um, hallucinating and provide garbage at best. That's why I want to start commenting on the Quent 2 model. Let's just move the screen a little bit. The Quent 2 output is surprisingly good. It picks up on the title and also provides a nice summary of what it is about. And it also identifies the results and analyzes the charts correctly and picks up on the data sets and what was used and the different models that were used. So that's very good. Definitely helps to get a better understanding. Phi 3.5 also does a decent job in picking up what the paper is about and what the conclusions are. However, it shows some weaknesses in distinguishing the character B from the number eight, as you see down here. It's Gemma-2-78, also in the paper it's 7B, not 78. Overall, it's good though. GPT-4 Mini seems to be a good job in structuring its response. You can see a lot of uh, markdown text in here and uh, it goes through a very structured approach. It seems to be cut off at the bottom. So uh, I'm not sure if that was an oversight of mine with regards to token limits or something like that, but I think this was definitely going to the right direction for this complex type of task. And once again, last but not least, the Claude model is entirely different level of quality. It's probably the best description and explanation of what I've seen. And it really helped me to even understand the topic of the paper much, much better. So really impressed by what this model pulled off. Let's next look at a high level summary of all the tests that I've conducted. Let's start wrapping up this video by looking at an aggregation of all the different results as I see them. Maybe to explain a little bit, I try to give each model for each task either a fail in case that it didn't do what it was asked for or did so with errors or hallucinations. I give it a yellow circle so that was in general if the answer was accurate with minor shortcomings. Question marks if it's inconclusive, so that was only the case for Quen2 with uh, one of the tests. A green check mark for a pass and a star for, let's call it a pass with distinction, which only was achieved by Claude. This doesn't come as a surprise given that it's by far the largest model that was tested. The model that I'm most positively surprised about is a Quen2 vision model. I'm really a bit disappointed that the chart plus reasoning question just gave us this cutoff answer even when trying it on hugging face directly not via the api because otherwise it could well have been the second best model in this test and given that it's open source and given its size that would allow to run it locally in a quantized version it's an impressive achievement i think the phi 3.5 vision model also did a very good job especially if you consider that it's only 4.2 billion parameters in size, and it's almost on par with the 7 billion Quen2 model. I think what this test has also shown is that there has been quite a leap in technology and likely the approaches on how to train models since earlier in 2024. That's the conclusion that I draw from those two older models that we've tested performing by far the worst, whereas they are still comparable in size to those two newer models. Quen2 and Phi 3.5 vision. That's a wrap for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this context, then please leave a like, leave a comment, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. That would really help me to do more like this in the future. If you want to discuss or need some help with getting started with Nime, then feel free to reach out to me on uh, martin at finnovationflows.com or send me a connection request via LinkedIn by scanning the QR code. That's it for today. See you next time. And some of the things I've shared with you today, you can find linked in the description below.